Good morning, this is Anthony Priscilla discussing logarithms with my college algebra class. And uh, first of all, I'm going to form, I'm going to state the definition of logarithm and we're going to assume whenever I use the variable b that it's some number, some positive number, but not the number 1. So log base b, this little b is a subscript of x equals y means b to the y power is x. Logarithms equal exponents. This logarithm is equal to this exponent. What's the exponent you put on this number b called the base in order to get this number x? There's two ways of stating every uh, logarithmic expression. It can be stated with the logarithm or the way you're more commonly probably more co uh, used to doing it is as a exponent. Just knowing that definition, we could do an example, something like this. Log base, example, log base 5 of 25. You ask yourself, what exponent do you put on 5 in order to get 25? So here's what you're thinking. 5 to what power would give a 25. Whatever that exponent is, that's what this logarithm equal. Logarithms equal exponents. Well, 5 squared is 25. What about this one? Now, don't say 4. you got to think. Log base 2 of 8. You're thinking, okay, what exponent you put on 2 in order to get 8. Again, don't say 4. How many 2's do you have to multiply together to get 8? Let's see, 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 is 8. So it's 2 to the 3rd. Notice how every exponential expression has an equivalent, or correspond, excuse me, every logarithmic expression has an equivalent exponential expression. Over here, these are the logarithmic expressions. Over here, here's the exponential form of the exponential expression. If we look at some homework problems, this first one right here. We're told log base 3 of 81 equals 4, and it says write it as an exponential equation. Convert it to an exponential equation. But when you're converting to an exponential equation, the small number, that's the base. So when it's written, notice with logarithms, the bases are written small. In exponential form, the bases are written large. Okay? 3. The number that's by itself is the exponent. So 3 to the 4th equals 81. That's the same as saying log base 3 of 81 equals 4. So you can take any sort of logarithmic expression and write it in a form that you're more used to seeing. Okay. Now... What about this one? Here's an example, and it's going to re require that you remember something about your uh, some logarithm, excuse me, exponential properties that we discussed or that we reviewed the other day. Log base 7 of 1. You're thinking, what exponent, okay, someone's already got it. What exponent do you put on 7 in order to get a 1? Did y'all hear that? Remember that rule about a zero exponent? 
log base 7 of 1 is 0, the natural question to ask is, is there something special about that 7, or could that 7 be any positive number? Well, other than 1. Uh, suppose it said log base b of 1. Does it really matter what 7 is? Or is b to the 0 power going to give us 1 regardless of what b is? So this statement here, log base b of 1 equals 0, I'm going to put a star by it because that's sort of a rule. It doesn't matter what the base is on a logarithm, log of 1 is 0. Now, here's another rule about logarithms. Let's see. I'm going to put another red star by this one. Suppose we had this log base b of b to the x. Think in terms of exponents. What exponent would you need to put on this little b in order to get b to the x? It's sort of like who's buried in Grant's tomb. It's not, well, might be a little tricky, but it's not hard. Sometimes you just think it's hard because they b to the Someone got it. X, yes. B to the X equals B to the X. What we could say formally is that logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses of each other. Notice the way they cancel each other out. Informally, I guess we could say, okay, uh, if you have the same number here and here, then all of that cancels itself out. Another way you might see that written is like this. In fact, what I'm about to write is, if my memory serves me right, it's how I first saw logarithms defined in an algebra class. I was like, what the heck is that? b to the log base b of x equals x. Log base b of x, that's the exponent that you put in order to get x. So b, if you just replace this y right here with log base b of x equals x. That's another direct consequence of definition of inverse functions. f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. Do you remember the little fog and golf definition of inverse functions? f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. But for our purposes, we can just say, okay, we have the same number here and here. They cancel, the logarithms cancel out. Same number here and here. If we jump down to number four, right here, five raised to the log base five of four. Because these numbers, this number here and that number here, are the same, those cancel each other out, and we're just left with x equals 4. Can y'all see that, or do I need to zoom it in any? Well, I guess that's okay. Now, going back to problem number two, log base 5 of 1 over 25. If Okay, on problem number two, if we could write this log base 5 with a big 5 immediately after it, then we could cancel that stuff out, and your answer would just be the exponent. Here's what I'm doing. Log base 5. Start with the 25. How could I write that 25 with a big 5? Well, 5 squared. 
But do y'all remember what we were doing with the negative exponents? This one over, that one over I just circled, could be written as a negative five to the negative two. Do you remember the definition of negative exponents? Five to the negative two means one over, the purple negative means one over five squared. And the advantage of writing it like that is we have the same number here and here, so all that cancels, leaving just that negative two. Now, problem number three. X equals log base six. Oops, right here. Log base six of the fifth root of six. Well, we want to write this with a small six and then a big six. Now, how do we do that? How do we rewrite a radical with an exponent? Well, do you always call that rule? Let's see, where can I write it? Uh, here. An nth root is the same thing as what exponent? 1 over n. So like a fifth root would be a 1 over 5 exponent. A cube root of 1 over 3. A square root, 1 over 2. And once you have the same number here and here, all that cancels, leaving you just a 1 fifth. Now, for problem number five. Let's see. Problem five. Log base four of x equals two. I'm going to rewrite it right here. This one's different from three and four because the x is not by itself. We need to somehow get that x by itself. Sometimes students will say, well, divide. Well, no, you can't divide both sides by log base 4. Okay? Log base 4 is not a number. That's a function. Well, what can we do in order to get this x by itself? Well, if I move down a little, looking at this statement right here, if we have the same small number and big number like that, they cancel each other out. So what I'm thinking to do is, what big number could I put right here that would cancel out this log base 4? Well, a 4. Now this big 4 is now a, a base of an exponent, and this black stuff is an exponent. Well, whatever you put on one side, you got to do to the other. So I'm putting a big 4 on each side, turning this black stuff into uh, exponents. And the reason I'm doing that is now I can cancel those. And we would have just an x on the left. Don't say 8. The purple 4 is the base. And this little 2 here is an exponent. 4 squared is... 16. That's a nice way of solving logarithmic equations. Okay. To get the x by itself, let me just summarize once again what I just did. To get the x by itself, whatever that little number is, whatever that base is on the logarithm, you put that base on both sides. You're basically turning the logarithmic expression into, an, into exponents. The log base 4 of x became an exponent, canceling. This black 2 became an exponent, 4 squared, 16. Now problem number 6, we are, well, the, it's not like 5. It's more like 3 and 4 because x is by itself again. So I'm going to do number 6 the way I did number 3. We have log base 4. 
Now the 64, I need to write with a big 4. How many 4's do I need to multiply together to get a 64? Well, I'm thinking it's 4 cubed. 4 times 4 is 16, times 1 more 4 is 64. So, the 4 cubed, this red down 4 cubed, gives me the 64. Now this fourth root here, that would be a one-fourth exponent, but we could write it just like that, over four. So when you have something like six to the one-fifth, if that top number is a one, then there's no exponent other than one on the number. Okay, fifth root is a one-fifth exponent. A fourth root would be a one-fourth, but you'd have three times one-fourth, so we'll just write it like that. The cubed is the exponent on the four. This bottom number here, four, is the uh, root. So all of that cancels, leaving just a three over four. Take a break and then we'll do some more logarithms.